Hi, I'm Jeremy Howard. I'm a data scientist from the University of San Francisco. And today I want to talk about uh, this uh, video that I was sent. Uh, it's described as being uh, something about the danger of face masks from a Canadian worker. It doesn't mention the gentleman's name, but I've been seeing a lot of these videos around on the internet, and they have a scientific error in them that I want to tell you about that makes them totally wrong. Uh, so what this gentleman uh, claims is that, well, he, he does in fact do, is that he uses a, uh, a atmosphere, atmospheric quality measuring device, uh, which he describes as uh, being regularly calibrated and able to identify uh, agents in the air like hydrogen sulfide and carbon monoxide, um, and then he uses it to check his exhaled air. I will tell you this, if you are exhaling hydrogen sulfide, you have bigger problems than masks. Uh, but putting that aside, uh, the key thing he points out uh, is that he actually um, starts out by uh, uh, very appropriately using a scientific approach where he um, tests the air on its own, uh, so that's kind of the before group, and then he tests the air underneath his mask, inside his mask, after breathing for a little bit. So uh, this is the part where he puts his mask on, and then he uh, he breathes for a while, and the thing starts beeping like crazy. And he tells us that's because he's now breathing a dangerous atmosphere. Now what he says is that the air quality before he puts on his mask, well not the air quality, he says the oxygen level before he puts on his mask is about 20.5%. 20.9% is actually pretty normal, and afterwards it's about 17.5%. And his claim is that means he's now breathing 17.5% oxygen, which is too low. And if he was, that would be too low. 19 and a half is kind of the normal cutoff where people say, oh, not enough oxygen. But actually, that's not what's happening. Let me explain why. So you see, he's actually not breathing in the air that is 17.5% oxygen. He's actually breathing air that's inside the air, that's in, that's in the area around the mask. And let me show you why that is. That's because when I breathe out, the area between my mouth and the mask is too small an area to hold all my breath, and I'll prove it to you. So if I put on the normal kind of cloth mask that we're all being asked to wear, and I get this bag and I make sure it's all squished out so there's no air in it, okay, and then I breathe into it, so the first thing to point out is that this would not be blown up at all if all of the air was trapped between my face and the mask. In fact, a lot of the air has ended up in here. So we can estimate how much. Um, so what I'll do is I'll grab a, um, a measuring tape. So here's a measuring tape which we can grab. And I can take this measuring tape and we can say, well, this is, uh, I don't know, about nine inches by about six inches by about, I don't know, four or five inches. We're going to call it four because it's kind of rounded off. So we'll call it nine by six by four. So actually what's happened is, next time I breathe in, this amount of air is going to come in from the outside, outside of my mask, and a little bit of air is going to come from inside my mask. So let's head over to the computer and figure out what the percentage of oxygen I'm actually going to breathe in is. Come with me and we'll have a look. So here's a little spreadsheet I created, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in the height, width, and depth approximately of the bag we blew into, and then we'll try to figure out also, or we'll just make a guess at um, how much air might be inside the mask. And then in this spreadsheet we've got the uh, starting oxygen level in the air uh, at what the uh, Canadian gentleman said is 20.5%, and uh, then he said in his mask afterwards it was 17.5%. So the amount we exhaled into the bag was uh, 9 uh, by 6 by 4 or so, um, uh, so about 216 cubic inches. Um, so that's the amount that ended up in the bag, and then uh, what ended up inside our mask? Well, it's probably about, I don't know, half an inch deep between my kind of mouth and the mask, that's being probably generous, and then the area that's kind of uh, not touching my face would be something around maybe three by four. Um, so that means that we have about six cubic inches, uh, uh, probably less than that in practice, of air inside my mask, and about 216 um, in the bag. So when I inhale again, it's going to be about the same mix. 
Uh, so that means about 3% uh, of what I inhale is coming from that 17.5% atmosphere, and uh, the remaining 97% is coming from the 20.5%. So that means in practice, uh, I'm going to get 3% um, um, times 17.5 plus 1 minus 3%, uh, 100 minus 3 if you like, uh, times 20.5. And so my actual oxygen that I'm inhaling is about 20.4%. So in practice, uh, it looks like these masks are causing our oxygen levels to go down from 20.5 to 20.4, so we're losing about 0.1% oxygen. Uh, not getting anywhere close to that dangerous level of 19.5%. Uh, so in practice, uh, this is not a good reason not to use a mask. In fact, uh, Wearing a mask can save the life of people around you, um, and removing 0.1% of oxygen from what you're inhaling are pretty unlikely to be a problem. So I would say go ahead and wear that mask and help keep the community safe. Uh, it also means that the economy will stay open uh, more often and for longer. It will save jobs because you're helping to reduce the transmission of COVID-19 in your community. So wear a mask. It's not unhealthy, you're not going to get carbon dioxide poisoning, in fact you're getting basically the same oxygen level that you were before. Thanks for watching!